tell them what the conversation was and why you found it unusual. Please. Um, when he left, I know what shirt he was wearing because I fixed the collar, and the collars are different material. Yes, sir. Did you find that to be unusual? Yes, sir. And told them that you stayed at the house after dinner? I did lie to them. Alec, why did you lie? As my addiction evolved over time, um, it might be a policeman following me in, in a car. Um, Alec, why did you lie? The location. Alex Murdaugh, the disbarred attorney and former part-time prosecutor at the center of one of the most closely watched trials in South Carolina history, took the stand and denied he brutally gunned down his wife and son at the family's hunting estate, even as he confessed to committing a slew of other misdeeds. As my addiction evolved over time... And told them that you stayed at the house after dinner. I did lie to them. Thinking. Uh, it, and it, it could be anything that, that triggered it. It might be a look. Did you lie to Sled Agent Owen and Deputy Laura Rutland? Um, it might be a policeman following me in, in a car. Um, On the night of June 7th? I would get in these situations or circumstances where I would get paranoid. That the last time you saw Maggie and Paul was at dinner? I did lie to them somebody gave me. It might be a reaction somebody had to something I did. Did you lie to Agent Owen and Agent Croft on the follow-up interview on June 10th on that night? Yes. Did you lie to them t by telling them that you were not down at the kennels? Did you tell Agent Owen and Agent Croft? Alec, why did you lie? And in the interview of August 11th, the defendant answered a battery of questions in a day of testimony that wended through the night of the grisly crimes and into the state's sometimes muddled investigation. Murdoch admitted he repeatedly lied about his whereabouts the night of the slayings. In three separate interviews, the 54-year-old man insisted he never visited the dog kennels on the estate where Maggie and Paul were found shot to their demise with two different guns. The lie was exposed in March when federal investigators discovered a cell phone video his 22-year-old son recorded the night of June 7, 2021 at the crime scene. The family patriarch could be heard in the background of the video shouting about a guinea fowl one of the family's dogs had caught, according to multiple witnesses who listened to the recording. Come here, Come here, Come here Quick. It's a guinea. This is a chicken. Hey, Murdoch told the jurors he lied because his decades-long opioid addiction made him paranoid and he did not trust the state's investigators. He visited the kennels that night, he testified, but only for a few minutes before going back into the house. He offered a partial quote from novelist Walter Scott, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive, before admitting to jurors, once I told a lie, I had to keep lying. The shirt. Body cam footage from the night of the slayings revealed Mr. Murdaugh wearing a clean white shirt after he claimed he touched his wife and son's bloodied bodies on finding them lifeless. In the footage, Mr. Murdaugh is dressed in a white t-shirt and dark shorts with no obvious signs of blood. During courtroom testimony, multiple law enforcement officials described how Mr. Murdaugh was clean and did not appear to have any blood on him when they arrived on the scene of the crime. Yet according to the 911 call made by Mr. Murdaugh and body cam footage from his first police interview on the night, Mr. Murdaugh claims he touched his wife and son's bodies when he found them by the kennels. In the interview footage, he is heard telling law enforcement twice that he tried to turn over his son's bloodied body and that he had checked him and his wife for pulses. I mean, I tried to do it as limited as possible, mm -hmm. but I, I touched them both. Okay. I tried to take, I tried to take their pulse on both of them. You know, I tried to turn him over and uh, I don't know, I figured it out to my wife. And I, I mean, I could see mm -hmm. mm, popped out of his pocket. I started to try to do something with it. And I ran over to Maggie, and uh, actually, I think I tried to turn Paul over first. Further on Friday, prosecutor John Meters asked the Murdaugh's housekeeper 
Blanca Simpson to identify the clothes Alex was wearing in the Snapchat video recorded by Paul at 7.38 p.m. the night of the slayings. She confirmed that he was wearing boat shoes and a blue polo shirt, which she never saw again. According to the testimony after the slayings, Paul pulled her aside and asked her if she remembered the Vineyard Vine shirt he was wearing, but she didn't. Simpson also said she also remembers ironing Murdaugh's blue polo shirt, a different material from the Vineyard Vine shirt. I remember a polo shirt, she said. I didn't say anything, but I was kind of thrown back. I don't remember him wearing that shirt. When he left, I know what shirt he was wearing because I fixed the collar, and the collar's a different material. Yes, sir. Did you find that to be unusual? Yes, sir. Thrown back because I don't remember that. I don't remember him wearing that shirt that day. In my mind, I was saying I don't remember a Vinnie Vines shirt. It was the polo shirt. He said, B, I need to talk to you. Well, during the month of August, do you remember him having a conversation with you about a shirt? And he said, I got a bad feeling. He said, I got a bad feeling. He said, something's not right. Tell them what the conversation was and why you found it unusual. Please. Um, he said, you remember the shirt I was wearing, that Vinnie Vine shirt. Those were, that's what he said to me. I didn't say anything, but I was kind of... Stealing millions. Alex Murdaugh also admitted he stole millions from his former law clients. After the slayings, he asked his drug dealer to attack him in a staged roadside homicide so his son could collect from his life insurance policy. He confessed. He lied, cheated, and stole. Yet he was not a slayer, he said. I did not shoot my wife or my son any time ever, he testified. And would you also agree that over the years, particularly as we move to June of 2021, you would use stolen money to pay that? Mr. Griffin, I didn't shoot my wife or my son any time, ever. It just, you know, you build up a tolerance to pain pills. I'm not sure when the first time I did that is. I do not dispute that I stole money that was not my money. Opiates gave me energy, trusted me to do that, and that what I did was terrible. One of the reasons I became so addicted is that I misled people to do that, that I misled people that... When you needed money, occasionally borrow as much as five and six figures from your father, Mr. Randall. I did. And so what might give me... How long did it take before you started doing that? And would you agree that you also... As I took more and more, and over the years... When did you start stealing money from clients? I don't dispute that. Murdo has cried, smiled, scowled, and sometimes even laughed during the month-long double slaying trial. Former colleagues have testified that the disbarred attorney was once a charismatic legal tactician who could read people's emotions and exploit them at trial. South Carolina prosecutor Creighton Waters suggested in cross-examination that Thursday's testimony was the chameleonic man's most bravado performance, as lies tangled up with half-truths in an attempt to fool the jurors and escape a likely life sentence in prison, it's rare for a defendant to take the witness stand rarer still when he has dozens of other charges hanging over his head. Alex's best friend exposes lies. Chris Wilson, one of Alex Murdaugh's former best friends, testified about how he was caught up in Alex's web of lies and deceit. Wilson said he had no reason to be suspicious when Murdaugh first asked to have the $792,000 fee deposited directly into his account, rather than paying it directly to the Murdaugh family law firm. At the time, Murdaugh said his intention was to protect money because his son, Paul, was involved in a wrongful passing lawsuit, even though the direct payment was a violation of the firm's rules. I'd known him for 30-plus years. I didn't have any reason not to trust him, Wilson told the jury. But after Alex admitted to stealing money from him and being addicted to opioids for years and all the other lies he's been caught in, Wilson told the jury while fighting back tears that he no longer knows how he feels about Alex. A unique defendant but Murdaugh is a unique defendant. Before the slayings, he was the sterling scion of a legal dynasty built by his great-grandfather more than a century ago among the marshy pinelands of the Low Country. Three generations of Murdaugh's were elected solicitor or top prosecutor for five counties across the southeastern portion of the state. The family built its significant wealth running a private law firm during that time, 
representing victims of various tragedies across South Carolina. The ruddy-faced lawyer graduated from the University of South Carolina School of Law in 1994 and joined the family's firm four years later. Murdaugh admitted Thursday he considered running for solicitor himself, but his drug problems made him reconsider. He still dabbled in prosecutorial work and enjoyed the trappings of the position, according to testimony. He owned two prosecutorial badges, one of which he sometimes kept on his car dashboard, as well as two identification cards from the 14th Circuit Solicitor's Office. His law firm's vehicle was equipped with flashing emergency lights he testified were installed with the permission of local law enforcement officials. The Murdaws were catapulted into the public eye amid a true crime renaissance that has turned the bizarre saga and ensuing trial into a lurid spectacle. Self-incrimination Judge Clifton Newman informed Murdaugh of his right against self-incrimination Thursday morning. He affirmed he understood them but still wished to take the stand. He cried, rubbed his eyes with a tissue, and gulped down a bottle of water during testimony. Mucus poured from his nose at one point as he eulogized his wife and son in long soliloquies. He talked movingly about the difficulties of his wife's pregnancies and her contagious laugh. He described his son as an industrious and inquisitive man's man with a tender heart, the father testified. He would never hurt his family members under any circumstances, he said, but he hurt others, he confessed. Details emerge. Murdaugh told the jury he became addicted to opiates after he underwent surgery in the early 2000s to repair a knee he injured playing college football. He visited a detox facility three times before the slayings and tried to quit many more times at home, but he could not kick the habit. I'm not quite sure how I let myself get where I got, he testified, but I battled that addiction for many years. He confessed to stealing millions from his law clients and the family firm, in part to feed the addiction. When the firm's partners, along with his brothers, confronted him about the thefts on September 3, 2021, he was forced to resign. The next day, he contacted Curtis Eddie Smith to buy more opioids, he testified, but instead asked the drug dealer to shoot him. He wanted his son to collect his life insurance policy worth $12 million at the time, he testified. At the time, in the bad place that I was, it seemed like the better thing to do, he told the jury. Smith shot the defendant in the head, but he survived and was transferred to a hospital, he told the jury. He initially claimed he was targeted by an unknown assailant, but confessed to investigators a week later it was all a ruse. The lies fall apart. Creighton Waters, the state's lead prosecutor, began cross-examination in the late afternoon. He needled the defendant over his betrayals, asking the ex-attorney several times if he could recount for the jury a time when he looked a client in the eyes, promised he was on their side, and then robbed them blind. He admitted there were many times he had done it, but he could not recall the details. He instead repeated the same lines like a mea culpa mantra, I stole the money that didn't belong to me, I misled people and I was wrong. He admitted not all the money went to opioids. The family could be described as wealthy, Murdaugh testified, and some of the ill-gotten funds went to maintaining their lavish lifestyle. He stole money from a quadriplegic victim, he admitted. He siphoned money from a child settlement account, and he ripped off a woman whose daughter passed away in a car collision, he confessed. These were real people, Waters emphasized. They were very real people, the defendant agreed. The saddest part of this whole thing is, these were people I cared about and I still did them this way. Waters is expected to continue cross-examination Friday. Keep an eye out for our upcoming videos as we shed further light on this mistangled tale. Mistangled.